결국 너랑 나랑은 함께 살아갈 수밖에 없어. Parasite, the Grey. I was kind of wondering why it was called the Grey, and I guess we find out in the show that there's this special forces unit called the Grey Team. But you know what? I actually think it should be called the Grey because this show is actually morally gray. It is based in the same universe that the anime happens in, and so basically this whole story is about this parasite that comes to Earth. Okay, there's like seeds of this parasite. Okay, there's like multiple of these parasites, and they kind of just dig their way into a person's brain. These humans. That have been infected by these parasites, they can like open their head and become like these giant tentacles, and they attack people. And I guess their mission is to eat other human beings. In this show, we follow Dong Suin. Her dad was very abusive when she was young, and she called the cops on him, and they took him away. And then her mother kind of ditched her too. She's really close to this detective uncle, who was the person who came and took her father away. So he's pretty protective of her. She is. Working at a supermarket as a cashier, and then there's this really crazy dude. He follows her after she gets off work, tries to kill her with a knife, and then right before she's about to like die, the parasite comes. Digs its way into her brain, and then she becomes one of these creatures. Except she's very different from other people who have been infected by parasites because she was stabbed by the guy, and so the parasite had to use half of the effort, the energy or whatever, to heal her injury, and so she could only like infect part of her brain. So she's very different from other parasites because other humans who have been infected by these parasites, they're completely gone. Like they're not human anymore. They're just parasites. The way they talk, they act really sus because they don't know how to act. Like humans, they're just very stoic. They don't have any facial expression. The moment they take over the body, they're going around like stabbing people with tentacles. The other main character in this is a female cop who is the leader of Team Gray because her husband was actually one of the first people that got infected by this parasite in Korea. They were shopping at a supermarket, and literally, she went back in to get something, and the next minute, her husband, infected by this parasite, comes in and starts like killing everyone. That was really shocking and sad, but I. Think Think because of that traumatic experience, she's like really trying to rid the world of these parasites. Humans that have been infected by these parasites have the ability to sense the presence of other parasites when they're infected. You can't tell they're infected. Obviously, they act really sus. Nobody in the show seems to react to that. 보통은 이렇게 호텔 같은 데 가는 걸더 좋아하지 않나? 아니. <laughs> They're just like, oh, you still look like a human, so maybe you're fine. But I'm just like, it's so obvious. They literally have no expression, and they're just like walking robots. I'm like, how are you not suspicious that something is going on? She's basically using her husband as like this hunting dog to like hunt down other parasites around Korea. That's basically the whole setup of this story. The problem arises now because the main girl. Jung Soo-in. She's not like a fully converted parasite. She's still mostly human. The parasite in her body has the ability to control her body for only like up to 15 minutes a day. The problem for her is that she doesn't fit anywhere. She's like stuck in the middle. If the humans found out she was infected, they would obviously want to get rid of her. And then if the parasites knew she wasn't fully converted, they would also not let her join the other parasites. They have formed this sort of cult around this Sejin church because. Because the lead parasite infected the pastor of this church, so he's trying to gather all these parasites. They have these gatherings at this abandoned church, and it's also weird that this whole cult—they have like a church brochure, like a pamphlet that gets passed around. And I'm like, why do you even need that? You guys already can sense each other's presence. You don't need evidence for humans to find you. They leave clues, and I'm like, you know, you could have hidden yourself, parasite. You could have lived among humans and been really stealthy, but for some. Reason you left a lot of obvious clues. Team Gray's captain is out to get her because she's suspecting that Soon is a parasite, even though she's human, and she passes all the parasite tests. But because Team Captain's like really against parasites, and because she actually kind of saw her transform, I think they were trying to go for this sort of morally gray thing where you're supposed to feel kind of bad for the parasites too, or at least some of them. Because later on, after we learn about the freaking pastor's parasite, I did not. 
not feel bad for the parasites anymore. This pastor's parasite, he saw something within humanity that was worth not eating or something. He was like, instead of eating all the humans, I feel like we could be a very powerful entity if I became the leader of humans. And it was really crazy. And so his whole plan in the end was supposed to like, he was waiting for the mayor of this region in Korea. He wanted to take over the mayor's body. He's a special parasite because he can jump from host to host. There was this one scene, my least favorite scene in this whole show because it totally took me by surprise. Before that moment, I actually felt kind of sorry for the parasites because I'm like, yeah, you guys didn't choose to be born this way, to be so dependent on other organisms. But I'm like, that moment when they killed the pastor, the parasite just like detaches from the head, cuts off detective uncle's head like in an instant and just becomes him. Did that really just happen? Because I was really starting to like Detective Uncle. He was the only one that cared about Soon. He was such a reasonable detective dude even though team captain she was going after Suin and trying to like get rid of her because she's a parasite detective uncle was trying so hard to like help he cared for her so much that he's like i can't let her be so unfortunate in life she had a very unfortunate life and then the whole team grace captain wanting to lock up Suin just because she thinks she's a parasite but Suin passed all the tests you scanned her brain you took a piece of her hair she showed no signs of being a parasite and yet you're still trying to get rid of her. It also begs the question of these mutants. Did they deserve to live? They're still quite dangerous because like the moment the parasite takes control, you don't know what happens. Can you kill an innocent person just based on the threat that they might pose? And also there was a conversation between her and the parasite where the parasite was like, I saved your life. You know, you were like on the verge of death. And she's like, but I didn't ask for you to take over my body. I would have rather died in that situation. You kind of took away my autonomy and the parasites like you know what i'm just trying to survive and it just so happens in this case that i saved your life even though you didn't ask for it if you were gonna die anyway you might as well allow me to take over your body i'm also questioning how much you can say that just because it took over the brain of a person that that person is like completely gone there were two scenes in this show that made me feel like the original person might still slightly be somewhere there there. The first scene is when Team Grey's captain, her husband, they were using him as a hunting dog. One of the other police officers sort of betrayed humanity and he ended up killing the husband. Team captain was very sad about it. The whole time she's fully convinced that her husband is gone. Like this is a monster. It's not her husband anymore. But when his heart stopped beating, she was still crushed. It's kind of like vegetables, right? <laughs> not vegetables. Humans in vegetative states, they're brain dead, but we still want to keep them alive. And the other time was when ex-gangster dude's sister, after she was kind of joining their side and fighting the pastor, he ends up killing her. Ex-gangster, the brother, he was also very sad. And she apologized to him. She was like, I'm sorry I took over your sister's body, but I guess that was more of the parasite apologizing to him. It's a very interesting concept that they only take over the brain. I don't know the biology of these parasites, but it's kind of interesting to think about. Pastor dude ended up getting killed by... Team Grey's captain, lady. She finally accepted Suin as a mutant. Eventually, in the end, we get a teaser of next season in which the main character from the Japanese anime makes an appearance because we've kind of rid all of the parasites in Korea now. I guess they're going to move on to other parts of the world. I think there's going to be more mutants. I think being a mutant is pretty cool. But also kind of weird because it's like there's something in your body that you can never get rid of. And you didn't even have a say in whether or not it could enter your body. Oh, it's weird. It's morally gray. I don't know if you can say this is completely wrong. It's like us getting sick too. Us getting COVID. It's a virus that we didn't want, but then we can kill it off. I don't know, Parasite, pretty good show. If you've seen the anime, I'd like to know if the anime is more elaborate. Does it explain where the parasites came from? I don't know, maybe I should just go watch it. <laughs>